Okay, so, first of all, x squared equals 9. I asked for solutions. Everybody says 3. Nobody says negative 3. Okay? But when I press a little bit, it comes up. Right? Because obviously, if you square 3, you get 9. If you square negative 3, you get 9. There are two solutions to x squared equals any positive number. Okay? Always, if you've got a positive number, there are two solutions. Related to the fact that your fundamental, uh, your, your basic quadratic graph is like this. So you take any y greater than 0, the horizontal line cuts it twice. And we're going to make that connection, but... Hopefully you've already seen it. If not, we'll sure we make it. Okay, so now if you take x minus 5 squared equals 9, it's going to be true if x minus 5 is 3 or x minus 5 is negative 3. Okay? So it's very easy to solve an equation, a quadratic, this is a quadratic equation, you can put it in standard quadratic form, you don't need to, okay? It splits into two equations, so that x equals 8, or x equals 2. If you solve this, you add 5 to both sides, you get 2, right? Add 5 to both sides, here you get 8. If you plug in 8, you get 8 minus 5 squared is 3 squared, which is 9, and so forth. So you can check it, and it works. Okay? So this is great. This is very simple. It's an easy equation to solve. Okay? And this is even easier if you just remember, but I don't want to see just one solution. <laughs> if this is a positive number over here. If it's a negative number, then it's an imaginary solution. If it's 0, then you've only got one solution which is zero. For reasons we'll see, we say that that solution's repeated twice, plus zero, minus zero, but it's the same thing. Okay? Um, okay. Now, what if you have an equation like this? What are you going to do with that? Well, I told you over here what you do. What's this thing got? Denominators. denominators. What are you going to do? You're going to multiply by a common denominator. That needs to be an automatic reflex. Okay? And after you do the 486 problems I'm going to give you for homework, I'm not going to do that. It wouldn't take that many to make it automatic. I'm going to keep repeating it until I'm sure, pretty sure it's automatic, though. So get it right the first time and make it automatic, right? So you don't have to do too many problems. I mean, I've got a computer program, I can generate a million. <laughs> have you work until it's automatic. That'd be ridiculous. Think about why it's true. Okay, so common denominator is what? 3x. 3x. You got a denominator here, you got a denominator here. Remember, you can always multiply your two, or all your denominators, however many there are, and you get a common denominator, right? Now you want to get a little more careful about that and get a least common denominator, but there's no way to make, you get a denominator any less than that. So, okay, so 3x multiplied by x over 3 plus 3x multiplied by 2 equals 3x times 4 over x. So, 3x times x over 3, and I'm going to go ahead and be careful with my multiplication. 3x times 2, we can do, we know that's 6x. But I'm going to just be careful and write these things with denominator 1 when I'm multiplying by fractions. And I get... Again, if, you, if I ask you to with fractions, you understand this. If you don't, you really need to. 
Um, and then what happens? Well, 3x squared over 3 can be written as 3 over 1 times x squared over 1. It's 3 over 3. They're going to add to what we get here. And it's 12 over 1 times x over x. And I don't like cancellation. I mean, I kind of love it, but I don't like it in this class because I've already seen bad cancellation three or four times today. Okay? So, 3 over 3 is 1. x squared over 1 is just x squared, so it's 1 times x squared. So we know that that reduces to x squared. I went through those details previously. If you're not completely comfortable with them, be sure you work them out. Okay. We don't want to get hung up in pre-algebra. Now, um, this, what kind of an equation is that? Well, I can rearrange it, so it's obvious what kind of equation it is. I can rearrange it to x squared plus 6x minus 12 equals 0. And now we identify this as a quadratic equation because it's an ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay? So, <clears throat> what's a equal to? B equal to? Six. It's a coefficient of x. It's 6. What's C equal to? Negative 12. 12. That's 48, right? 36 plus 48, 84. Can we get that just a minute ago? Just don't look. Okay? And that's approximately equal to. signs because we've approximated. It's not an exact solution. These are the exact solutions here. Okay? Now things we do square root of 84, we write that as 2 times the square root of 21. Okay? I'm not going to mess with that right now. Let's just get something that'll solve it and then we'll fill in the finer details that you should know, but maybe aren't quite um, anyhow that's going to be 3.2 over 2 that's 1.6 that's negative 7.6 yeah. There's a lot more to it. How do quadratic equations connect with some of the graphs we looked at? How do you use them to answer questions that we've answered by estimation? Well, first thing I want you to do is understand the graphs, understand how to estimate. But we have to have this machinery for when we make that transition, and you'll find it very easy when we do. Okay?